Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about how champions, how champions turn a quote-unquote slow market into unstoppable success. So slow market, right? We're dealing with a market shift, as they call it right now, hyper competition, margin compression, rising rates, refis drying up. A lot of borrowers have been priced out of the market. We've been wobbling back and forth. It goes up, it goes down, but obviously it's a lot higher than it was last year, early in the year. And so we got everyone and their dog in this business who was picking the low-hanging fruit with refis now clamoring after the same realtors because that's the only real source of business right now that's consistent, reliable, and something predictable that they know they can count on if they can just get the referrals, if they can just get solid borrowers coming their way who are ready to do a mortgage now. Because like we always talk about here on Planet Prosper, regardless of the market, regardless of rates, regardless of the economy, regardless of inflation, people are going to keep getting into the market, moving up in the market, getting married, getting divorced and dying. And all those require transactions. So they might as well have your name on it. So it's not a matter of the market. It's a matter of your marketing such that you can win in any market, not just a fair weather market when it's lollipops, unicorns, rainbows and sunny skies. And you have that low hanging fruit with business just coming to you without even having to skip a beat. But we need to find a way to build your business on a rock solid foundation so that you're winning with consistent, what I call freedom money business, regardless of what happens with the market or refis or inflation and so on and so forth. So the question is, how do you actually do that? Right. Some of you might think it's a bit like the Loch Ness Monster. You hear about it, you talk about it, but you never see it. Right. It seems like that elusive butterfly that is perennially eluding you. And for good reason, because frankly, you go and you get your license as a mortgage professional. No one really teaches you how to hunt. No one teaches you how to hunt in the wild, like a wild Kodiak to win in any market. You know, you have so many different options from buying shit leads off the internet, Zillow, Facebook ads to chasing after financial planners or CPAs or you know divorce attorneys or putting on lunch and learns. There's a million and one ways to skin the cat, right? No one really teaches you how to work smart versus working hard and how to build your business on a rock solid foundation so that you're least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most such that People can be in this business for 30 years. I talked to a guy literally this week. He'd been in the business for 31 years. His best year was 10 years ago, and he'd never broken more than like $130,000, $150,000. It's like, how is that possible? Well, because no one taught him how to hunt in the wild like a wild Kodiak. And he basically had the bear born in the zoo mentality, and no one had ever really equipped him, and he'd never... I guess, had the wherewithal or the I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of getting my ass kicked impetus, what I would call positive perturbance to go out there and venture out and find a solution, find someone to actually teach him such that, of course, he was on the phone. But even when we were on the phone, he wasn't ready. You know, there's a difference between having knowledge that would be helpful, useful, that would make a difference in someone's life. There's a difference between that and someone being thirsty, hungry, ready to receive, right? It's like the old proverb that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. That is so true. True the first time it was spoken, still true to this day. So I want to unpack for you guys the distinctions that allows you to win in any market. Because the last thing you want to do is to be worrying about the next market shift, right? Where you know, you're making money hand over fist when everything's lollipops, unicorns and rainbows and sunny skies and rates are low. And, you know, you show up with a pulse and you can fog a mirror and loans just come on your lap. You know, anyone can win in that market. But how do you win in a market like we're facing now where people are sitting on their wallets and they're sitting on the fence and they're waiting and they're procrastinating and they're thinking maybe, you know, we should wait for another time, a better time when pricing is better, when affordability is better, when there's less question marks, when there's more certainty, when there's more confidence, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So we want to be able to set your business up 
So you couldn't give a rat's ass what's going on with the economy, the market rates, et cetera. And I'm sure you would agree 100%. So I want to teach you how champions win in any market, how champions turn adversity into opportunity, how champions think about the market and their marketing such that they continue to take ground, they continue to expand, they continue to grow and grow market share regardless of what's going on in those externals. Sure, there might be a bit of a slowdown when it comes to the accelerated growth they might experience in a um, fair weather market, but they're going to still be able to grow their business. They still can expand their top line and bottom line revenues. And so there's a mindset to this and there's a skill set to this. I want to unpack both of that. All right. Both of those key components. We're going to give you the buttons to push, the levers to pull, the knobs to twist. All right. So buckle up. Seats in the upright position is go time, baby. Let's go. So the first thing I want to unpack is step one. Step one in how to win in any market and create unstoppable success, even in a quote-unquote slow market, is to use the quote-unquote extra time you have right now if your pipeline is slowed down, if your calendar and your schedule is not as crazy as it was a year and a year and a half ago, is to use that extra time in your schedule to hem up the holes in your marketing bucket. What do you mean, Doran? What are those holes in your marketing bucket? Well, let me tell you, I'm glad you asked. There's so many different holes, but the top three, the top three holes that I see most commonly in mortgage professionals marketing buckets. And what the, the reason why I call it bucket is kind of like everyone wants to fill their bucket with more leads, more borrowers, more closings, more volume, right? More commissions. But if you have a big gaping hole at the bottom of the bucket, we got a freaking problem, right? That's called working longer and harder for less. And it's a hemorrhage of opportunity. Why pour more water into the top of your bucket, so to speak, if you have a big hole at the bottom? Why not hem up the hole first? And then you can fill it to the brim and then some. And you're not just making the world rich by virtue of having too high of expenses or leaving all that money on the table to your competitors or both. So first thing is expenses, okay? Things that you're spending time and money on that are not giving you optimal results. It might be coaching programs that are getting you to do the caveman method from the dark ages, like cold calling realtors every Monday. You might be spending 300 bucks, 500 bucks, two Gs a month to get these so-called marketing coaches that I'm sure have good intentions, but they're giving you dinosaur methods, right? If they're getting you to cold call realtors with a lackluster limp value proposition, that's doing it the hard way. You know, it's like, if you want to build the skyscraper of your dream, you need to dig a deep foundation. But if you're digging that hole with a gardening trowel, we got a freaking problem, right? There's something called an excavator. There's no brownie points in the bank for using the gardening trowel. Hello, right? Let's use the excavator. So much more fruitful, so much more fun. So, one of the things you want to look at is just cutting back on expenses. We're going to talk more about that in my next step that we're going to talk about, but there's also the time you're spending, right? Time you're spending on things that are not working, like cold calling realtors every Monday or buying shit leads off the internet that you have to sift through a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. You know, you'll buy a hundred leads. You might convert one or two or three. You know, that's a lot of chaff, not many kernels. That's doing it the hard way. But Doran, I'll still be profitable. Yeah, you'll be profitable, but you'll be making one third the profit you would if you had gotten that same deal from a referral from a client or a referral partner. So, I mean, yeah, you're profitable, but why not be double or triple the profitability and have a better quality borrower who's hot for what you got, who's pre-sold on you, pre-tenderized, predisposed to do business with you before you even talk to them. They're more prone to be compliant. They're more prone to be grateful. They're more prone to refer you more clients by virtue of referring you to their friends and family. They're more prone to do repeat and referral business and give you a five-star rave review. So why would you do it the hard way by buying a bunch of crappy leads, right? So things you're spending time on that aren't working. Maybe it's uh, networking. You're going to networking event, networking event, networking event. It's like you're making all these quote unquote friends, but friends don't necessarily equate to funds in your bank account. True or not true, right? So I deal with this all the time. I'm speaking with mortgage pros all the time and they're in 
so often they're prone to, because of course they're on hundred percent commission and they're entrepreneurial. And I've never heard of a optimistic uh, or rather a pessimistic success, right? I've never heard of a successful pessimist. So there is a certain degree of optimism that's baked into what we do as entrepreneurial hundred percent commission uh, results, getting type of uh, individuals on the front lines of capitalism, earning what we keep, you know, we earn what we keep by virtue of uh, actually having a hundred percent commission-based performance performance-based compensation, and so because of that, our personalities tend to be more optimistic than the average "quote unquote" salary type of employee. That's just par for the course, right? But what happens when we're optimistic is we're prone to heading east, looking for the sunset. And we just keep doing it, thinking that having more hope and putting in more time and putting in more effort and doing the things that we've already proven to ourselves don't freaking work. We think that doing more of that's going to fix the problem. It's like, oh, if I just charge a little harder, if I just run a little harder and a little faster heading east, then I'll see the sunset. No, that's not going to work, right? If you have the wrong strategy, it doesn't matter how hard you work or how long you work, it's not going to fix the problem. Doing more of what isn't working and what has not worked or what has not worked at the level that you need it to will not fix the problem, right? We're not going to fix it by doing more volume of what already doesn't work, right? So now that you have looked at all the things you're doing, you want to identify what are the things that are producing the least results? Is it networking events? Is it cold calling realtors? Is it, uh, you know, working with bottom feeding, wanting cinnamon, complaining, jelly, donut eating, low producing realtors that send you a deal a year versus a deal a month? What is it that you're doing where you're spending an inordinate amount of time? Let's call it 80% of your time, but you're only getting 20% of your results. Those are the things we want to start to prune out. And this can be hard. I can tell you from experience that I'm so prone to be delusionally optimistic I'm, I'm the first to tell you, I am so prone to playing the ostrich and just sticking my head in the sand and just pretending that, you know, the problem does not exist because I'm just going to, you know, keep charging. I'm going to keep going forward. You know, I got too much grit to quit. I refuse to lose. Right. So I've got this identity of someone who never quits, an identity of someone who never gives up. And who's optimistic and finds a way to win. You know, I'm a winner and winners always find a way to win, right? All these mantras. And so what that can really easily allow me to do is to sugarcoat the problem and to neglect, to prune out what is not working, to be vigilant. And what happens is instead of being vigilant and pruning out what's not optimal, I allow myself to perpetuate the very problem that has me sick and tired of being sick and tired of grinding, working longer and harder for less. And I'm learning now as I get more mature as an entrepreneur that that proclivity is not serving me. It's not serving my optimal impact in the world. It's not serving my optimal profitability. It's not serving my ability to create potent results with the least time, energy, money, and stress. And so the goal now in this season of my life is to prune, because if you think of the gardening term, when you prune, what does that do? When you prune a fruit tree or you prune a plant, whether it be a raspberry plant or whatever the case may be, when you prune it, what does that allow you to do? You're saying no to what's less productive, what's less optimal, so you can say yes to what's more productive and what's more optimal when it comes to the outcome you're going for, which is bigger fruit, juicier fruit, more succulent fruit, sweeter fruit, right? You and I both know we're not just here gardening to grind, right? We're not just getting our fingers dirty just to be out there to get some fresh air and get our hands in the dirt. No, we're getting our hands dirty because we want to make some green. We want to make some paper. We want to make some impact. We want to serve some clients and we want to have optimal profitability while we do it. And we want to have the most amount of peace of mind and certainty and control of the process, right? I'm sure you'd agree. 
So to do that, we need to start to prune out what is not optimal. And what this market shift has done for many, and chances are you're no exception if you've been in the business for more than a year, is, is it has exposed our weak points. It has exposed the areas where we were building our house on shifting ground. We were building our house on quicksand. We didn't know it because the storm had not come yet. But as soon as the storm hit, it's like we got, as soon as the tide shifted, we realized, oh shit, I'm naked, right? And all of a sudden we get exposed to our nakedness. The tide all of a sudden shifts from flowing to ebbing and we get caught with our pants down. We go, oh shit, this isn't working anymore. It was working before. It's not working anymore. And that's just simply exposing a weakness in what we're spending our time on, our systems, and the various different areas in our business that we should have been doing when it was, you know, fair weather market that we should have been more proactive with that we should have already had in place. So the three areas you want to make sure you hem up holes in is number one, your database marketing. Okay. So your database marketing should and always will be your best source of business if you treat it as a garden that you need to water and fertilize and till. And when you give it that focus and give it that attention, it's going to give you an abundant harvest and repeat referral business and rave reviews. Repeat business, repeat transactions with clients and with partners. Referral business from happy clients and partners who better source, right? And rave reviews that allow you to show up and shine online. So you become the only logical choice. So when people do a local search in their market for a mortgage provider, you start showing up top of the list with more five-star reviews than any of your competitors, right? You become the only logical choice. And now you've got pre-cooked, pre-tenderized, hot for what you got, really high quality leads straight from Google, hot for what you got, pre-sold on you before they even talk to you, right? That's the best source of leads ever online, straight from Google. So notice how this is about having less leads, but more apps, more closings, and more commissions. I want you to start to think of the disciplined pursuit of less. Less partners, but more referrals, more closings, more volume, more commissions. Less leads, but better quality, more qualified leads such that you're able to convert at a higher percentage. You're able to earn more per hour worked and have every deal be a bigger commission deal. The average loan size bigger, the average commission per deal bigger, your earnings per hour bigger. Because when you start to think that way, once you optimize that model, you can rinse, wash, and repeat it. You can press the repeat button on that bad boy. And you can now scale up rinse, wash, and repeat, and scale up on that optimized strategy where instead of spending 80% of your time on the things that produce 20% of your results, you're spending 80% of your time on the things that produce 80% of your results, right? So you want to think about optimization by eliminating the hemorrhage where you're leaving money on the table to your competitors. One area is your database. Are you following up with your pre-approvals? Are you following up with your prospects? Are you following up with your leads? Do you have a drip campaign that sends out weekly video tips? Do you have a direct mail newsletter once a month going out to prospects, clients, and referral partners? Do you have a phone call campaign going out to your past clients with uh, their birthday call campaign, celebrating their special day with their uh, either a home purchase anniversary or a mortgage anniversary where you're connecting with them, rekindling, reconnecting, seeing how things are going. What's their debt load like? Did they get themselves in hot water with high interest debt on credit cards? Maybe a, a debt consolidation would make sense. Do they need funds for sending their kids to college? Maybe an equity takeout makes sense. Do they have friends and family who need your help? ask for referrals? Do they need to connect with a financial planner or a top-notch realtor or any of your preferred vendors in your million-dollar Rolodex? See, it's about having a meaningful conversation that brings value to your partners, that brings value to your clients, and that allows you to get an endless stream of referrals. 
and of course, captures repeat business as well. So those are the sorts of things you want to bake into your database marketing so that when you have your database marketing put in place, you just set it and forget it. And it reminds you to make these calls. It sends out the emails. It sends out the text messages, right? It sends out the videos. It's doing all these things on an automated fashion. After closing, it's asking for the review. Once you get the five-star review, you're asking the client for a referral because who better to send you a referral than somebody who just gave you a five-star review? That's the absolute best source of referrals ever, right? You're happy clients. So until and unless you have systems in place to automate this process, to put policy, procedure, protocol systems and campaigns in place such that you're no longer the bottleneck, you're going to be the bottleneck. And as long as you're the bottleneck, the chance of you building consistent growth is slim to none because... You're a human being, right? Welcome to the club on the front lines of real life as a human. You're going to feel unmotivated one day. You're going to forget. You're going to lose your excitement for it. You're going to get caught up with the minutia. You're going to be sucked into the vortex of loan level issues. You're going to be, you know, towed around by the nose by putting out fires and dealing with the urgent and the important. Sound familiar, right? So we need to remove you as the bottleneck. We need to build a systems-based business versus just a you-based business. Can you see how that would make a difference? And that's, again, a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us here at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is to have those plug-and-play turnkey systems because this is not an easy code to crack. Like If you've never been taught how to do this stuff, man, it's like trying to solve the Rubik's Cube when you've never even looked at a Rubik's Cube before, let alone knowing the algorithms and which way to twist and how and so on and so forth. Like my son, my 13-year-old son, he's a whiz kid with the Rubik's Cube. He can solve the Rubik's Cube in like 43 seconds. I kid you not. The kid is just like, he's built different. Uh, now he has a proclivity for it. He's got that brilliant strategic mind that I just don't have. But even he had to go online and learn from Rubik's Cube masters, what are the algorithms Otherwise, it would have taken him eons to figure it out. He probably could have figured it out eventually, but it would have taken him way longer. So the same sort of thing here. Why take the long, slow grind up the mountain unnecessarily? Why take the 100-story staircase with a 50-pound backpack, you know, sweating your buns off, doing it the hard way, when you can just press the P button on the elevator and go straight to making prosperity money, penthouse money, you know, and be able to just step into your power to produce right from the get-go? right? So same kind of concept. So the first area that you want to look at when it comes to hemorrhaging opportunity and hem up the holes in your marketing bucket is your database. The second area you want to look at is, of course, partners. You want to make sure that you're nurturing, you're identifying who your ideal referral partner is, and you want a system to continually feed the bench with fresh blood so that you're not relying on a stagnant a uh, group of referral partners where you're hitting the point of diminishing returns. And now you're fearful as soon as they start showing up as a prima donna or they start showing you trauma and they start, you know, becoming that maverick that's uh, high maintenance and they're calling you up at 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday night and they're high demand and high maintenance. You know, you're going to put up with that and you're going to end up being their loan bitch and put up with all that flack and all that drama and trauma if you don't have a solid, ever-feeding stable of fresh blood into your partnerships, into your dream team. So you need a system for that. So that's another hole in your marketing bucket. You want to make sure you hem up because if you don't, again, you're going to be leaving a lot of money on the table. And the best source of referrals is and always will be your happy clients and referrals from top producing real estate agents who make you their exclusive because you think about it, you know, a mediocre majority realtor will maybe send you one, two, three deals a year, a top notch realtor, a top dog realtor who's doing 20 plus buyer sides a year. They can easily send you one, two plus deals a month. So you think about that, you know, how much is one of those partners worth to you? They're worth at least 30, 40, 50 grand a year to you right? Depending on how much your average commission per deal is and where you're located and what your average loan size is. But even still, I mean, we're talking big bucks. You don't need that many of those to change your life in a hurry, right? You get 10 of those and you got a made in the shade, right? And even in a market like this, think about it. When you're hitching your wagon with the whining, slimming, 
whining, sniveling, jelly donut eating, low producing, mediocre realtors. Those are the ones who go in and starting to work Uber or skip the dishes or working at Walmart or work, working at some other part-time job because they're getting chewed up and spat out. They're first and most affected by the market downturn, not least and last. The top dogs, though, on the other hand, those are the ones who are taking market share right now. Those are the ones who are taking market share because they have a big brand, they have a solid brand, they have a solid reputation, they have a big pool of clients that keep doing business with them. And so they're the go-to. So they actually gobble up market share in times like these. So those are the ones you want to be hitching your wagon to, not the ones that are working at Walmart next week. You know what I'm talking about? So strategically, you want to hem up that hole. It's called building your dream team and continuing to fill. You need a, a funnel. You need a system to continue to fill that funnel. So you've always got fresh blood. And this is, again, one of the ways you rinse, wash, and repeat to take your business to the next level. Because, uh, I mean, the same system that can get you to make in $300,000 a year it's exactly the same system to get you to a million dollars a year when it comes to the actual referrals from realtors, because we have a system that allows you to take the shortest path to the cash by getting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts. It's called the shortest path to the cash because there's no faster way to grow your business than getting the best quality borrowers served you from a silver spoon, from a silver platter, from the best partners in town. There is no shorter path to the cash. You know it and I know it. But we spend so much time on all other trivial many pursuits that are the 80% activities that produce 20% of your results instead of, instead of zeroing in on like a laser beam on the 5 to 10%, you know, the 10% activities that produce 90% of your results. And this is the thing I'm talking about. So we want to hem up that hole, right? So your database is a key piece. Having top producing realtors make you their exclusive, we want to hem up that hole. And then the third hole that you want to hem up when it comes to where you're spending your time is just simply making sure your operations are airtight, right? So that way, it's kind of like you're McDonaldizing your business. What's the difference between McDonald's and Bob's Burger Joint? McDonald's brings in 40 billion plus a year, whatever the number is, this astronomical number. And Bob's Burger Joint's maybe like, $300,000 or half a million. So what's the difference between them? Bob's Burger Joint probably has a better burger. Why are they doing such a small amount of business in comparison to McDonald's? Because McDonald's has systematized the whole process from A to Z such that it's reliable, it's consistent, and it's a machine that produces the same outcome every time, reliably and consistently system, right? It's undergirded with systems, policy, procedure, protocol. And that's why they have people popping teenagers governing all their operations for the most part, with the exception of having one manager that's over 30. Everyone else is like young people, right? How are they able to do that? How are they able to do such big volume, big money with these pimple popping teenagers? It's because they have airtight operations. So that's the other area you want to really nail down. Airtight operations, airtight database marketing, airtight realtor attraction. You cover those three in your quadrant of success, or rather your triangle of success, pyramid of success. You get those three nailed down, and you have the foundation to take your business anywhere you want it to be. Half a million, a million, two million, three million, the sky's the limit. And again, not just in a fair weather market, but in any market. So that's the first step in the process, y'all. I think I beat that dead horse. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is cut any unnecessary expenses and invest strategically in a focused growth plan. So I alluded to this earlier, right? It's like in times like these, we need to be really vigilant to cut any unnecessary expenses. Otherwise, we cut our you know net worth chewed up real quick in uh, lost savings and jacked up credit cards with revolving jacked up uh, lines of credit. Because uh, you know when it's a fair weather market and your money's just flowing, it's easy to just have all these expenses jack up and just have the green light for all these expenses. You know, you want to do this? Sure, why not? You know, all I need is one deal to recoup the investment. So you're saying yes to this and yes to that, and all of a sudden you got all these expenses coming in. And when you're when the money's flowing and you just keep having deals coming in left, right, and center, it's easy to do that because 
the money's flowing, the faucet's flowing. But as soon as the faucet starts to slow down a bit, as the market shifts, especially if you've been building your business on quicksand, relying on a heavy load of refis, you get caught with your pants down. All of a sudden, you can chew up your net worth in a hurry. I mean, I've talked to people where their net worth has been chewed up by 20K, 50K, 100K, 170K, 200K, literally in the last year. I think the one guy I talked to is like 175K in the last year. I kid you not. And that's just because, you know, high income, high expenses, living the life of luxury, right? Enjoying making freedom money, champion money for the family. And all of a sudden the faucet just turns off and they think it's just some temporary thing. And next thing you know, they're literally neck deep in debt and they've depleted all their savings and they're in a shit storm where, you know, they're having fights with the wife and they've lost tr trust with the spouse and the spouse is freaking out and feeling insecure. And then they reach out to me to help them solve the problem and turn it around. But it's like, it's tough because, you know, that's, that's a lot of hellfire singeing their arse when it comes to how are they able to even pay the bills when they get that deep in debt and that, uh, that much of a perilous financial situation. So we want to be vigilant to be pruning out those expenses uh, often and early. So the areas you want to look at are money you're spending where you're, you need to start holding every marketing dollar accountable to results. If that market is not producing a 2x, 3x return on your investment, if it's not producing at least a modest level of profit, you want to put it on the chopping block, ASAP. Because otherwise, you're perpetuating the problem by allowing the cancer to continue to take the body, right? You can't let that do. When you see that cancer, you got to absolutely cut it out ASAP or it's going to take you out, right? So these expenses, you want to start to treat them like a cancer and cut them out as soon as possible. And so I'm not saying you're going to want to cut out all those, every single expense, because some, some expenses do take a little time to incubate, right? Like if you've invested in a social media strategy and it's sophisticated and multi-layered and multi-pronged and you're already six months in, uh, and it's already produced a certain ground of, a degree of profit, but not as much as you had anticipated or hoped. You may or may not decide to keep it depending on how certain you feel it's going to continue to expand in profitability in return on investment. So, you know, obviously there's, you know, a little bit of intuition, a little bit of uh, strategic thinking and uh, feet on the ground, accurate thinking around what's the probability of a solid profit in this, uh, from this investment in the next 30, 60, 90 days. If it's not a high probability, I would cut it. If it's one of those like Hail Marys where we're like, I hope it's going to pan out. I have no idea. I hope. Well, like I always say, hope is great if you're in prison, but it doesn't make for a very good marketing strategy, does it? So we don't want you smoking the hope dope. We don't want you hoping. We want you knowing. And again, that's a big reason why smart, ambitious, and growth-minded mortgage pros hire us at mortgagemarketingcoach.com. They don't want to be hoping. They're done with the hope dope. They want to be knowing. And that's why they leverage our expertise with our proven plan to get them, number one, if they have a database, having proven systems to mine the gold from the debt, that database, maximizing repeat and referral business, as well as, of course, what we always call the shortest path to the cash because it is and always will be the shortest path to the cash, getting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts. So those are the areas you want to be thinking about when it comes to cutting unnecessary expenses. And then you want to focus on, don't focus on the 80-20, focus on the 90-10. Focus on the 10% activities that produce 90% of your results. And I would submit to you, that's always going to be your database and attracting top producing realtors. Now, you might be thinking, though, Doran, I get the top producing realtors are a great source of business, but they're often prima donnas. They don't give me the time of day. They won't answer my call. They already have an existing lender. So in truth, it's not really a 10%. This is 90% because I can't figure out how to crack the code with these people, especially now with everyone and their dog chasing after the same realtors. It's more challenging than ever. Exactly. And that's precisely why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us because it's not an easy code to crack. You can't just Google search it. 
But we've been doing this for 18 years, friends. So it's not our first rodeo. So we'd have to be complete nimwits not to have it figured out after almost two decades, right? Through blood, sweat, and tears, and a whole lot of iteration, a lot of tweaking, a lot of modification to be able to get it to actually work. And so why try to reinvent the wheel yourself when you can just stick your key in the ignition and drive away with our proven system? right? That's called working smart versus just working hard. But a focused growth plan should be putting you at the helm where you're in the driver's seat for growth, where you have control for growth, and you can consistently grow your business in any market instead of holding your breath in the passenger seat and waiting for rates to go down, right? That's not a good growth strategy. That's a great way to get chewed up and spat out at worst or to bleed financially at best. We don't want that to be you. So let's move on to the third step in this process of how champions turn a slow market into an unstoppable success. And that's simply to associate with other champions, right? Eagles soar with eagles and chickens scratch around the chicken yard with other chickens. Simple as that. I mean, it's who you hang out with is who you become. So if you're hanging out with other gripers, whining, simply complaining, uh, people that are always griping about the market and they're complaining about the market and they're a victim to the market, guess who you're going to be? The next victim to the market. So you want to surround yourself with people who understand it's not about the market. It's about your marketing and about your mindset. Screw the freaking market. You're going to create your own market. Screw the economy. You're going to create your own economy. Why? Because there's always business to be had. And in markets like this, this is the time to take market share. This is when you should be seeing yourself as the person who thrives in this kind of market. This is when you do your best work. This is when you take the most amount of market share. This is the time when you rise above your competitors. This is the time when you leave your competitors in the dust. Why? Because you're a winner. Winners always find a way to win and you have winning marketing and a winning mindset and you surround yourself with winners and you strategically attach yourself to other winners who spur you on to greatness, to give you insight, that challenge you to step out of your comfort zone, to step into the best version of yourself, to have you reveal those blind spots that you can't see on your own because when you're inside the bottle, it's hard to see the label, right? You're too close to the action. You can't see the forest for the trees when you're so close. So it allows you by virtue of hanging with champions because they see greatness in you, they believe in you, They're smarter than you in their gift set, in their zone of genius, such that where you are weak, they are unique. So by virtue of their gifts, their talents, their abilities, their superpowers, they allow you to unleash and to be released from the prison of your weakness by leveraging their strength. Because where they are weak, you are unique or rather vice versa, right? Goes both ways. Where you are weak, they are unique and vice versa. And so what that allows you to do is you can dance in your strengths. You don't have to be hindered and landlocked by your weakness anymore. You can now sail off to Paradise Island because you're propelled by a full suite of tools, strategy, and robust arsenal that propels you forward fast because you're not relying on your own thinking anymore. You are able to borrow other people's recipe for success, other people's success formula, borrow their tools, borrow their systems, borrow their campaigns, swipe and deploy what's working for them. So now, instead of marching out into war as a lone soldier and getting bludgeoned, you're rolling out the freaking tanks with a big ass army of elite level operators and everyone has their zone of genius optimized and leveraged. So you're able to leverage other people's superpowers. That's how you win on the front lines, friends. That's how you win, not just in a fair weather market, but in any market, surround yourself with champions. So what does that look like from a practical standpoint? It means mastermind, mastermind with other winners, you know, take them to lunch, hang out with them uh, for uh, coffee or tea or take them out for, you know, dinner or, you know, form a group of other winners where you mastermind. How do we take market share? How do we refer each other business? How do we build a dream team where I refer you business, you refer me business? 
build a mastermind. You can build a real estate exclusive niche specific mastermind of other winners in the real estate industry, all the top dogs, all the ones who have that eye of the tiger, you know, the lions, not the sheep. Build that dream team, you know, the Navy SEALs of the real estate industry, the elite operators. And that when you do that, you're creating a culture, you're creating an ethos, you're creating an energy and a momentum where you're working together as a team. And because of the synergy, the collaboration and the energy in the room, it's like that rising tide raises all the boats in the room. And on top of that, I want to strategically look at mentors. So again, this is another reason at risk of sounding self-serving. This is another reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded real estate agents uh, and mortgage pros hire us at mortgagemarketingcoach.com is to learn the secret sauce on how to take their business to the next level and to how to win in any market. And so if you're listening to this right now and you're like, Dorn, I have not been taking full advantage of the opportunity to take market share. I know that that's the opportunity right now. I have more time on my schedule. I'm not crazy busy and harried like I was two years ago. I know I'm leaving a lot of money on the table to my competitors when it comes to holes in my marketing bucket. I know I need to get my shit together when it comes to mining the gold from my database, maximizing repeat and referral business. I know that I need better caliber, better quality partners. I've been working with more of the lower producers instead of the top producers. I know I need to get with the 21st century. I've been doing old school methods from the dark ages, cold calling realtors every Monday, being the unwelcome, annoying pest instead of the welcome guest. I'm sick and tired of doing it the hard way. Dorn, I'm ready for some fresh inspiration, some proven systems. I'm ready to start working smart instead of just working hard. If that's you and you're a residential real estate agent on 100% commission, you're making 70 basis points or higher comp plan, you're ready to take your business to the next level in 2023. You're ready to add at least an extra 100,000 plus, maybe 200,000 plus to your annual income this year in spite of the market. You're defiantly committed to growing in spite of a quote unquote slow market. You're ready to grab the helm, the steering wheel, steering wheel instead of being in the passenger seat, holding your breath, waiting for rates to go down. If that's you, I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And on this call, we're just going to have a real talk conversation, an honest conversation. Uh, we're going to look at you know where you're at, where you want to be, what's working, what's not working and just shine the light of truth on your situation. And if we're 100% certain we can help you, then we'll show you what that looks like inside of our proven system. And if not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you'll leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Does that sound fair? I'm assuming that if you are in it to win it and you have an ounce of ambition, two brain cells to rub together, and you've hit the point of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of doing it the hard way, the answer is emphatically, hell freaking yeah, Dorn, bring it on, buckle up, let's go. So if that's you, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And we're just going to have a convo and see if we can help, see if we're the right fit to work together to take you to the next level. And it's not a sales call. It's a clarity call. If I have to sell you on making freedom money, not just in a fair weather market, but in any market, frankly, you're not ready to make freedom money in any market, regardless of rates, the economy, or what your competitors are doing. So it's not a matter of selling you on anything. We're just going to see if we can help you. And if we can help you, we'll show you what that looks like. All right. And if not, nothing ventured, nothing gained. At least you got some incredible clarity, some profound insight, and you're able to shine some light on your situation like never before. So I trust that if indeed you're in that place where you're ready to pour gasoline on the fire and claim your power to produce in any market at a whole other level, that uh, that's a meaningful invitation such that you're going to take me up on it. So go ahead and do that now at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And if that's not you, that's cool too. Maybe sometime in the future, you'll get to the point where you're ready for some rocket fuel in your rocket and some gasoline in your fire. So whenever you guys are ready to take things to the next level and you're ready to uh, start working smarter versus just harder and look at having a masterful coach in your corner to help you expedite timeframes and condense decades into days, we're going to be here for you. 
And if the time is now, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, y'all. My name is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. I trust you got some value, some insight. It had some fun hanging with me today. I trust also that uh, maybe you reheard something that you already knew because often learning is not learning something new. It's just simply getting that additional repetition in to have it lodged, not just in your head, but in your heart, such that you take action on it. So education is often more than just something new. It's about taking the old and having new perspective so that you take newfound action on it. And I really hope that that's precisely what I gave you today is to give you that impetus and to galvanize you into action because we get paid on done, not just begun. All right, friends, be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode and let's get after it. Let's step into your dream and let's make it real. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being with us.